Good morning everyone, welcome to Our Small Footprint. My name is Nissa and if you're new here, we are a family of eight who live off-grid in Australia. Now, I had all these plans this month. I had scheduled out videos I was going to do. I had decided to try and, you know, push some regular videos to <laughs> do, uh, to, you know, benefit me with the YouTube, you know, algorithm and all that sort of stuff. Uh, got videos out before the grocery haul, got the grocery haul videos out uh it got before the grocery roll and then we came back and there was bushfires now the bushfires were to that direction they were uh on they came across the neighbor's property and the neighbors stopped it I, that was on my last video i showed you where they stopped it at the fire break well we had all our evacuation everything that i talked about in the last one and then we're home for a day and a half two days and all of a sudden the kids came out of an evening to feed the animals so 4 35 o'clock in the afternoon 5 30 maybe and came back in saying there's fire and we're like what do you mean there's fire <laughs> and uh it was on our property this time and not the neighbors so remember the neighbors are so our house that's the chicken pens and let me see which way am i gonna go chicken pens and the house is just behind the chicken pens so I don't know 30 meters away maybe um, and then the neighbors is another hundred meters that way I suppose that it was and then the fires out here we're just coming up to them now we're on our property and there was just this big circle burnt and uh, slow moving uh, I'll put a quick clip here of the fire actually moving uh, I took like 10 second clip because you know there was a fire but I took a quick 10 second clip because I was showing it to my neighbors who I was calling as well to say there's fire uh, so I took a 10 second clip I'll put that here of what it looked like So as you can see, it was sort of a slow creeping grass fire on our side because the wind was blowing the other way. So it was it was taking off quite a bit the other way, but it was sort of slow and creeping on this side, which was the only saving grace for how close the the house was. Uh, so it burned for a while. We had to call, we had ambu we had sorry ambulance. We had uh, fire engines, rural and city fire engines here and uh, all helping out and getting it stopped because the wind was doing funny spirally things. It was going up and down in different directions and there was there was a lot of wind. Uh, so this is what we're left with. Uh, I did a quick video the morning after so I might put that video in here. Uh, I came out and surveyed the area and did a quick video it's been a couple of days now but I'm just it's <laughs> we're exhausted so I'll put this quick video in now of what it looked like the next morning uh, when I came out to check and then I'll come back and talk about right now which is I don't even know how many days it's been it's been two nights since then so um, so it is Saturday so the fire must have started Thursday evening <laughs> I'd have to go back and check data and I'll put it in here I think it was Thursday evening and it's Saturday now so here's the clip of the fire Friday morning which would have been yesterday morning <laughs> early morning 6 a.m. ish or whatever this is sort of as far as it crops so you can see that the house is just there so it crept here there's some definitely some smoking bits around I want to check the this one right at the edge here of the black because what we would need to do is make sure that all flames and all fire is kept inside the black line uh, you don't want it to catch anything else now I don't have a rake on me unfortunately but some dirt up over this one that's right on the edge here yep 
log burning there, but it's right in the middle. Knock some, they've knocked some trees this way. Some burning over here that we'll have to come out and probably do something with because there's actual flames. On this one, so need to. The wind's quite high today, so this tree here needs to go down as well because if it fall, it needs to fall that way. If it falls back towards this, then it becomes an issue. So because it's burning up from the inside, it will topple eventually. So we do need to topple it into the black rather than away from it. one's been toppled already so it's not too bad so I don't see other than this little bit of flame here which is an issue with this wind and I'll do something about and that tree we're um, okay on this side but someone just called triple O so I'm wondering if there's some flames around the other side still when someone calls triple O, we get a notification on the uh, bushfires app that there's been an incident. But they could have called it purely for the smoke because there's a lot of smoke hanging around. Um, but as you can see, everything, all the underbrush and everything is so dry that it wouldn't take much for an ember to come and kick something up. So we're... Um, keeping an eye on it all but I don't like that corner there those actual flames on that log and stuff so I'm going to try and give someone a buzz Daryl's asleep because I slept until about four and then he got up so I'm gonna try and give someone a bell I think the neighbors are still there but he has to work today I think too so but yeah so it went all the way around all the way around now the biggest issues we're gonna have are any really big trees that are flaming that will eventually fall Apparently there's a big dead one that will be an issue. Potentially that one there's smoking around the base and eventually it will fall and could cause issues. So that, the smoke there is just a lone log. That one's a lone log too, so can't see anything that's imminently dangerous as such. moment it all just looks pretty it goes all the way in there and all the way in the back there so so that is that was last night's excitement and we're still gonna have to watch it because if you look at the branches the um the winds are still pretty high so we're gonna have to be careful with that and now we're over 24 hours past that again uh so it was really early yesterday morning like 4 a.m that i came out last time and it's now it's midday ish today so i'm coming out to check because we did smell some smoke so the problem is let me turn you around and give you a look so the problem with the fires is that everything's in as much as possible is in this black zone but it doesn't mean that you don't still get fire so like trees come down I'm just I have to look around and be aware of where trees are burning so like this tree here you can see still is flaming and burning in the bottom there which means that that tree will go down eventually so this tree here will fall probably that direction by the way it's burning 
but it is going to fall. Uh, so it's still flaming and has risk while there's wind because when it falls it could blow up embers. So that one's still flaming in the bottom there. We've got some actual flames over here of a log that obviously dropped and is now burning out which is this one's a little bit more than I'd like we might bring some sand or a um, bucket of water out for that one actually um, and then we've got now you have to be aware as I said you have to be aware of trees so some trees they've taken down on purpose to try and limit uh, trees falling and stuff there's some significant smoke over here that I'm just going to double check and make sure it's in the black. So the aim is that anything that's burning needs to be burning in the black zone because that way it can't light anything else up. So all I'm doing is I'm walking through and double checking things. So this tree here has fallen off the stump but is stuck up there on that tree. Um, so that one's a bit of an issue. Let me walk this way. I want to stay safe enough to walk away from anything that could potentially fall. Because you don't want to put yourself at risk out here either. We've got another stump. So this is what the bush that didn't get burned looks like. Lots of, um, lots of fuel for it. And then, so this stump here is burning as well. But again... It's in the black and the tree's already fallen and the tree hasn't caused any issues. So it's quite a bit of smoke over at that corner there, which I might walk around and double check. So let's just go around the perimeter and double check that one. Um, make sure. That it's nowhere near anything fresh because that's the thing we just want to make sure that nothing's burning near where it can light anything else up so where's that smoke it's over that way you can hear crackling which is not necessarily a good thing So just walking through, making sure to be aware at all times of where anything is. It's a lot of smoke. Watch where you're walking, watch the trees that are around you. Very much make sure situational awareness. Alright, so this log is burning here, but it's in the middle of nowhere so it's fine that's all good this big tree is burning which is a bit of an issue that's gonna burn for a long time that's warm that one is gonna burn for ages um, a little one burning there but you can see how large a space Burned. Okay, we've got the tree burning there, which is fine. Again, it's in the black. But I can hear flames. Or I feel like I can. Or is that just the birds? We're still walking through all the burnt. Okay. It's that tree and it's lit up the top. So this is not good. Um, I'm gonna get off here cause I'm gonna call someone.
All right, so I just called someone about that one because we're just going to have to be aware of it because if it falls into unburnt stuff, then it could light it up. So having flames going up the tree can be an issue. Having stuff on the ground in the black is not such a big deal, but flames up in a tree is a bit of an issue. So this is why we're doing perimeter walks. Oh, we got branches coming down. So it just lost a branch, but we just don't know which way it's going to fall. So I'm going to move at a bit of a distance to it and just keep an eye on it. And uh, we can call someone if need be, but um, the hope is that it burns out before before it um, falls. But that the sound of flames is always a little disconcerting when you've just had fire on your property. But everything else looks okay. So other than that tree right on the edge there, we're still gonna have more fall and we've still got plenty more burning, like, you know, plenty stuff burning and uh, but most of it's on the ground and it's not too big a deal so uh, I didn't check walk over and check that one so I might just double check what that one is and then we'll um, just keep an eye on that one and you know double check the biggest problem is is that where the fire is it was not an easy spot to get to so even for the fire department it was really hard for them to get in here because we don't have much in the way of tracks around the property which we're going to aim to do something about it's one of those many things so that one's nice and in the middle of the black too so that should be fine so yes all the excitement none of the normal videos out because of it uh, we've been having lots of discussions about planning and things like that a lot of helpful advice about bug out bags in the comments and stuff though uh, the idea of bug out bags and the actual ability to do it is two different things because we just we live fairly minimally and having the amount of stuff needed for a three-day bag means purchasing it and even if we went to like an op shop and bought 50 cent stuff when you're talking eight people worth of you know drink bottles and three days worth of clothing and underwear and socks and all that sort of stuff it's still quite a significant outlay uh, so we're working towards it but in saying that this particular time that we had to leave uh, the kids did most of the packing while Daryl and I were trying to stop this fire and they were not allowed to leave the yard um, and they um, were required to do most of the packing and because we'd done it the last couple of times they did really well everything got packed up and in the car within like I want to say 20 minutes uh, they did really really well with it so uh, we know we can do it now and not forget things generally speaking so another big tree just burning there which is what all that smoke is but it's just a tree on the ground burning so yeah um, we know we can do it in a hurry and we know what we need now and things like that so for the moment that's fine the next step is to outfit a trailer so that we can potentially put um, the dogs and maybe um, the generator and things like that on the back of a trailer so that we've got that capability as well um, which will benefit us all if we ever if we got to a point where we had to leave and we couldn't come back um, there was talk about um, tents and stuff as well and how we could use tents um, but everything else is looking okay um, uh, how having a tent in the back of the trailer would be handy too because especially if we've got the dogs with us um, which might be something we look at long term but yeah it's just a matter of figuring it out so uh, that's what we're doing and I'm grateful for all the advice even if we can't necessarily implement the advice that's given just because there's a difference between wanting <laughs> and being able to <laughs> so anyway uh, so I just thought I'd quickly give you an update because I've been doing lots of food prep but I just haven't had the opportunity to do any sort of editing or videos on it and I wanted to catch up with everyone and also just because YouTube likes me to post so you know 
there's a few different aspects to that as well. So I'm only just coming out of the burn zone now. So that's how big it is. That tree is up on the opposite side. Going to go let Daryl know about it. He can come out and assess it as well. And we'll call Jablo if we feel the need. If we think it's going to cause more issues than we can handle. So thank you for joining me again today. Thank you for all the messages. Thank you for all the comments. Eventually I'll at least get through and hard all of them. <laughs> and I will hopefully see you on a video about food next. Thanks guys. I appreciate each and every one of you. See you next time.